Hi everyone. First of all, thank you very much for attending this video. All I want to do today is I'm going to demonstrate for you how you set up a server-side GCM container within Tag Manager. I'm going to show you how you host it with Stave.io, which is my preferred way of doing it. And I'm also going to show you how you send your first webhook server-to-server uh, transaction or order or purchase from the Shopify store to the uh, SSGGM container. So let's get going. First of all, I'm here in within my Google Tag Manager account. So I've gone to admin. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say plus create a new container. We are going to give it a name and I have this development account. So I'm going to call it a, a 40 and it's going to be a server side webinar container. This is just the name that you're going to use. I would often call these server side dash your website name and then I will have a client side dash website name. So I'm, it's very clear for me when I'm working in the containers, what is what. This is where the magic happens. We are going to select here server, server side uh, instrumental and measurement. Let's create this. Say create. Good. This is where it's first of all, it gets very interesting. So, you can automatically provision the server into the Google Cloud. If you do this, it has a minimum spend of 100 USD per month, uh, and you will have to take care of a lot of infrastructure. I don't think that's the optimal way. So what I propose to do instead is to set it up using manual provision with Stave.io. So we're gonna select manual provision here, and you are gonna get a unique identifier of this server side container. Let's copy this, and now we're gonna to go to Stave.io and create our account. This is the Stave.io website when you enter it through my uh, partner link. Uh, please use this link because, well, it shows me that you have followed this guide and also get a small kickback. So it would be a great help for me. Thanks, guys. What you're gonna do here is you are gonna enter your email address and say try for free. When you've done this and verified your account, you will be able to log in to the Stave I.O. interface. Important note, when setting up your account, you should select the EU entity and that you wish to host your containers in the EU. Uh, this is especially important if you are on the EU regulation as this is the only way you can be compliant. Otherwise, it will be hosted in the US and that's illegal due to the Digital Markets Act and GDPR. So we are now logged into a Stave.io dashboard and we will go down here and say create container. We will give the server, uh, server side container webinar demo. Then we will have to input a container configuration. You remember that ID that we got just before from setting up our server side container here? Copy this ID, move it into server configuration and then we're going to say server's location well you can select Poland, France or the Netherlands. I, due to the geographic placement of my uh, clients and where I work I often select France just because yeah, you can whatever suits you the best. Create container. There we go we are going to select the free tire because that will give us up to 10,000 requests which is more than enough for getting going and proving the business case for our seniors. Uh, this is the pricing plan. Uh, most clients, they end up around 20 or 50 euros a month. And we will say automatically upgrade to the next uh, bidding tire. That's, uh, let's say Black Friday. You have a lot of requests. There's nothing worse than your container going down and that you don't get any tracking because it wasn't upgraded. So just automatically upgrade container, it'll be fine. Continue with free plan. Then we have to say billing. I'm in Denmark. And we are back. I've just inputted my billing information and my credit card done the uh, freely secure challenge with my um, phone. Everything's fine. So now we're ready to say update subscription. Here we go. We have now created a server-side container hosted with Stave.io. And we can see here that it is already up and running. Great, we have completed two of the three things we needed to do today. 
let's move back. Oh, when we're here, you can see that you are able to add a custom domain, which is great. So I would suggest that you add uh, t.yourmaindomain.com and you set up the, um, uh, the DNS records for this. Uh, I won't cover this, but there's plenty of guides online how to do it. It will make it so that your server-side container can load your GTM from a first-party domain. It will also be able to, your server-side container can set first-party cookies, which is really interesting when we're talking about tracking prevention. Good. For now, we will just use this uh, domain name, which is the domain name Stave.io has created for our server-side container. Let me go back to Tag Manager. I will say close. And here we go. We are now ready to set up our uh, tagging scripts. So we'll just go ahead and say start setup. Uh, oh, sorry, we'll go back to that. Okay, so as I talked about in the webinar, we will have to have a data client that can accept payloads from whatever source, either it being the user's browser or our web server. So what we'll do is we already have here a default client which is the GA4 client. Uh, you can use that to receive GA4 events and you can pass those on. I like to have my own data clients. So we go down to templates. We say add new client template. Up here in the small, the free burger menu out of dots, we will say import. The thing is here, I'm importing a data client from Stave.io and I will link to this where you can download it in the description of this video. But We'll go up here, say import. I have it located here in my, it's a small template file, it's a, a JS JavaScript file. We will import this and you can see it populates all the fields and all the code that's happening here. You don't need to write that. All of that is handled for you when you import this. So say save. There we go, template created, good. Now we can go to the clients tab. We can say create new. We can go here and say data client. I often prefix with my company name in Telego and I can say data client. We now have a data client. We now need to configure it. So we go here and then we'll say accepted path. Because the thing is, each of these data clients live on a URL on your server. Remember that we got that URL from Stave.io or it could be t.yourdomain.com. Well, now we want to have this data client listen to t.domain.com add data. So we will add here the path data. So now all requests sent to this path slash data will be sent and handled by this data client. So here we go, we have this ready. We are now ready to preview. So we're actually now ready to send our first request. So we will say preview, and now we'll ask us for our domain. So we'll go back and get that. This domain here, good. And we'll say preview, and we'll edit container settings. There we go, add URL for the container. This could also be your uh, t.domain.com. Okay, so this is just where Google should interact with the container. There we go, update the container, and we should be able to preview now. Here we go. So what we get here is we get a regular preview mode as you might be used to on or within web GTM. So here we have some data events or event data coming in. We have some variables that we can set using the event data or we can make them to constants. We have tags that are fired and we can see requests that are going in and out of the server. All great. And you all have this small console over here, which is great for debugging. The thing is, a server-side container doesn't interact with your browser as a web GTM does. So we will need to tell uh, the server which request should be sent to this preview window. So what we'll do here is we'll go up here and we'll say send request manually. Here you get a secret code that changes once a day. Sometimes it changes more often, but, but this is the preview header that you need to send with request going into GTA, server-side GTM if you want to preview them in this specific window. 
This is great because you can be multiple people working on this, sending requests to different um, preview uh, windows. This is the same you see when you set up conversion API for Facebook. You have a test token and you pass that on. Good. This sounds jolly complicated, am I not? So let's copy this code. What we'll do is we'll go back to state. We'll go to power ops. And then they've actually made a small function in here where we can simply say, we want a preview. Please add this special code to all the requests coming into the server so we can see them in our debug mode. Great, very handy, very important to turn it off when you are done debugging or setting up. Good, so we're now ready to receive uh, preview data within our tag uh, preview window here. Let's go to a um, Shopify store. I have installed the Stave.io app into my Shopify here. And what I'm going to do here is, uh, first of all, I can use this to implement a web GTM uh, loaded via my custom domain. And I can do some cookie saving and I've done lots of great features. Won't, won't go through them today, but just know there are some very interesting things and benefits you can use when using this system. Let's go here. We want to send um, webhooks for when a purchase happens in your Shopify store. We want to send a webhook. Yes, please. We then need to pass through what URL should this request be sent to. Back again. Here, go to settings, grab our domain. It could also be t.domain.com. Yeah, your own domain. Sorry, over here. You remember we set up that data client, don't you? And that would allow us to send data to that specific client. So we would say add data. So all requests sent from here will be sent to that specific client. Good. We want to have a purchase for you, a webhook, and we'll have a refund webhook. Now, this is going to be interesting. This is where I hope this demo works. We can press here and say test, send test webhook. Oh, this is moving me around. Let's just go here, send test webhook. Now we go back to our preview mode. Oh, and they have already arrived. This is now a event that has happened. It's the purchase webhook and it contains data. Okay, so just your, your, like you're used to seeing within a web GTM with data layers, you now have data in the event data. So all of this data you can use and set up in custom variables um, in GTM. So should we just do this quickly? I have two minutes left of the demo. Okay, guys, let's be quick here. So we have e-commerce, zero, and value. So we go back here, we say variables. Say user defined, new variable, event data. And we say int order value. Go here and we say our path was e-commerce. Yeah, this is this. Then we see it's the first entity of e-commerce, so we put a zero. This is the JSON path, that's just how it is. Then we go here and we say the key for this is value, and the value for value is 403. So we go here and we say value. What will happen now is we go preview, or save, and then we open up a new preview. We send the request again. Go. Hopefully this works. Now we'll say here we have the purchase webhook. We see a request coming in and oh, Julian messed up. So let's go back here and say what did we do wrong? E-commerce might be just like that then. And we say preview. We send a new test request. And, go to purpose. and now we see it. So everyone makes mistakes. This is me making a small mistake. But this is how you like there was a question was asked during the webinar. How do I validate the data coming in and how do I see it? This is where you see the data coming in, and this is how you validate that order value is set to the value from the event data. Now you can start using creating tags, you can use transformers, you can call external APIs, you can do custom logic, 
Um, you can do forward procedures. You can do advanced uh, matrix calculations. Service like GTM is amazing. Remember that requests that are coming as a webhook directly from your server, let it be your Shopify, WooCommerce, Magento, uh, whatever e-commerce platform, Laravel, whatever platform you are coming from, you can send completely secure messages from your server to your GTM server and the customer or the client can't see this data. So you can include profits, CLV, custom tags, custom information about the products, every, like things you wouldn't put in a client side where other people could see it. You can send these as webhooks and then you can use them and hopefully enhance the data you send and have a much higher quality of data and you can control where the data goes. But I talked a lot about that in the webinar. I hope this helped you. Otherwise, please reach out. I'm available on, on email. I'll put my email in the description. I'm available on LinkedIn. Um, just reach out. I'm here to help. I love helping you guys. And if you have a data, pro uh, a data project, I would love to hear about it. And I would love to hear what you've done with the data. And I would love to help you if you want to do advanced setups or if you just want help implementing Consent Mode V2. I can do that too. Have a great day.